something you can't fix. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go instead. It's Jay and Adam. It's Previewed. It's Previewed's Fix It with Adam and Jay. Peaches, oh, welcome to Fix It, where friends don't let friends fix pop culture alone. I'm Adam. And I'm Jay. And you're our listener. Hey there, listeners. Ho oh, there, listeners. Game over, listeners. That's right. Everyone in Felisteria must go to their uh, government sponsored quarter receptacles and input a quarter and press start, in, or our entire country. Will indeed cease to exist. Oh my god. Yes, indeed. Yeah, no pressure or anything. Well, that's why we don't do income tax in Vlisteria. Oh, okay. Everyone, make sure everyone has enough money in order to, you know. Play the games, play the yeah, arcade. You gotta, yeah, you gotta put, put pump quarters in that machine. and. Uh, so the arcade uh, funds infrastructure. Yes. And all government services? Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. And it also breeds, you know, neighborhood, because, uh, you know, people are like, oh, like, what's your arcade machine in your neighborhood? It's like, oh, we got a dig dug thing. Like, ah, praise be the comma that these keep our our country existing, right? Yes. Yeah, man. I'm glad we're entertained by these arcade machines. Yeah. So, you show some respect, you know what I'm saying? I I had no idea (laughs) uh, that our, you know, our small government was uh, run, was funded by arcade winnings. Not funded. It's not a funding issue, Lashy. It's an existential issue. It manifests Vlisteria. These strange machines oh. are the things that keep us from slipping into the multiverse. Oh, so it's like a Zoltar situation. I thought that was very clear. It was not clear. <laughs> Some people wish to be older. We have Others Im- just wish to exist. Look, we have organized our economic infrastructure in order to support these and support sure, these machines. Right. But you know, it's not it's not really like you're getting bogged down in capitalism over here, my man. I'm just trying to figure out how this government works. I'm just so trying not to look too hard into the void because it looks back. Jay, we need a comptroller for a reason. <laughs> the the comp- sewage system needs to flow, bud. <laughs> and it does. It does. I didn't know we worked on wish magic, though. Yeah, man. Okay. That should have been obvious from Jump. Anyways, welcome to Fix It. I'm Jay. That's Adam. You may know us from the wildly successful YouTube reaction mm. channel Previewed. Uh, where we always give you exactly what everyone wants at all, every time. Every time. Uh, but this is our podcast, Fix It, where every week Adam and I take a piece of pop culture that maybe missed the mark, maybe didn't quite get there, maybe just needed one more life, and we fix it. Uh, and uh, this week, uh, because uh, the Fallout uh, series is going to be coming out, it's on Amazon. Is that Amazon? Correct? It's coming out on Amazon. Uh, Adam and I are we're bringing a new format uh, to the fray of this podcast. This week, we are going to be doing a pitch a palooza of video game elevator pitches. Yes. Uh, for video game properties, because I think the one thing we are going to be fixing this week is that hopefully Fallout will be another win in the era of it looks pretty good video game adaptations into movies and television shows it's looking pretty and good. so we hope we hope that uh it becomes a more popular thing and doesn't become a punchline yes because uh, we're teetering on the edge right now we've got we've stacked up a couple wins a couple more and we're like okay things are really flowing the war out. is not over the but no. we've had some good battles though mm-hmm. and so we are uh we are going to be coming we are going to be coming to that peace treaty with a lot of good ideas mm-hmm. for video game television shows slash movies mm-hmm. um but before we get into our pitch of palooza today uh adam and i have come to everyone's absolute most favorite segment we took a poll yeah, everyone uh, was forced to yeah man's <laughs> democracy everyone was yes, forced to <laughs> vote yes indeed and uh it's our segment we call roll for convo and in this segment, Adam and I uh, have 20 topics of conversation on Adam's computer given to us by the wonderful and lovely producer, Brian. He's just the best producer in the business. He also he also has no idea what he's going to walk into if he messes up at one, at one more time. Sure, it's going to be game over. No continues. Game over, man. Game over. Anyways, uh, Brian's given us 20 topics of conversation, and I am going to figure out what we're talking about in our first segment by rolling this 20-sided die. That is a gentleman's four. A gentleman's four. 
Okay. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. <laughs> oh, okay. What horror what? movie or scary movie moment stuck with you from when you watched it as a kid and as an adult? Yeah. I think I've talked about this on the channel before. Sure. But it's, you know, it bears repeating. Does anything jump out to you immediately? Dude, I have two immediately. All right. You go one and then I'll, I got one. So you can do one. Kid I'll first. do one. Kid first. The librarian from Ghost Ghost Ghostbusters. Oh. I couldn't watch it for over a decade. Yeah, I always was like, oh, this is fun. Oh, here, I know it's coming. Out of the room, and I'm back. Rest of the movie, perfectly fine. That librarian turns and skip. Nope. Yeah. Nope. For me, as like a young, young child, uh, the flying monkeys in The Wizard of Oz. Really? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Also, as a child, child, I didn't, I guess I just, like, I don't know why I went, didn't go to like childhood, like, first. Uh, E.T. Yo. E.T. Spooky. When you're like five, he's spooky. Sure, he is I scary. Would have never thought of that. No, I did not. Just, yeah, just in general, the whole just ET, the whole movie. Do not wow. like. Wow, still don't totally trust it to this day. Really? No, nope. he just wants the phone. I've, home. Ne- I've never seen ET all the way through. Really? Yeah, he you're spooks in, me. You're not, I don't you're like not it. Missing much? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy the way he looks. It really bothers me. And I know, like, for a lot of people, there's a lot of nostalgia with that. And, like, there's, like, sure. a large cultural touchstone with that. But for me, I see him and I go, no. Absolutely oh, not. You just... Absolutely not. <laughs> not even once. Not even once. Wow, okay. Bye. Bye. But you're, not, you're not so cute, big eyes? Glowy fingies? Yeah. No? It, I got to give the practical effects artists in that movie credit. Uh, okay. But, um. Yeah. I guess I didn't even think about that. Yeah, there's a lot. I, I was kind of a Freddy cat as a kid. Sure. Like it, and and I, I didn't really, like I didn't like scary movies. Nope. Roller coasters spooked me, me quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've kind of come around on I've come around on uh, on horror movies a little bit. If the plot's good, I can get into it. I'm more enjoy it for the plot. Yeah. Well, I make things too. I think we both have this problem. We make th- we make it too real. Yes. We we fill in all we the inv- gaps. We, I yeah. invest in the given circumstances of it immediately. Yep. In a way that like I can't, I cannot, and I think that's what makes us good reactors is that I have a really hard time detaching myself from what I'm watching. Uh huh. Um, yeah. So I had for the longest time like, but now roller coasters. I love roller coasters. Well, my coasters body doesn't fun. love me riding roller coasters. Oh, anymore, okay. But I love roller coasters. Well, that's fun. Yeah, I've been on a one, one in a while. Yeah, dude. We want to go. Go. We can go on a coaster. We want to go to like Cedar Point. And just like go coaster nuts. Sure. I might die. You, you, yeah, but you might go coaster mad. That's true. That's true. That's happened before. Uh, 2014. What a summer. I don't know how you avoided those <laughs> charges, but somebody got out of them. But. Look, you know, you know, warrant is only valid if you if you believe it in your heart. You know? Oh, okay. I don't even know what that means. I don't know if that's how the law so, works. adult scary movies. For me, mine is a very specific uh it, very specific well i wasn't really adult but i was like 15 i think that's not no nowhere near an adult well but yeah it's nowhere near but uh but it still spooks me to this day every time i think about it it is the scene it is th- from the movie what lies beneath okay harrison um, ford harrison ford and i know and i know a lot of people who are really into horror movies mm-hmm. are laughing right now because it's not really that scary it's really not that scary no. it's really not that scary but there is this one shot in What Lies Beneath. Mm-hmm. It's not even the bathtub scene. Because I was it's thinking not... yeah, the bathtub scene was a good... Yeah, it, it was a good jump scare. That, it was a good jump scare. But that, but you kind of saw it coming. No, maybe you did. I didn't. For me, for me, it is when... It, it's, a, just, it's the way that it's shot. Like the cinematography makes it scary. Oh, yes. It's, uh, it's when uh, our, like heroine Mm -hmm. is going up she's going up the stairs Mm -hmm. and you can see out of the in the corner of the shot as she's going up the stairs like through the banister you can see remember and this was back in the 90s when people had a family computer that was like in the living space Uh it wasn't just like everyone had their own computer right it's like the family computer uh you could see you saw the computer screen and it was, and it was structured in such a way that it was like very clearly not the focus of the shot. Right. You see the computer like boot up Mm -hmm. and the screen just start running letters. types, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like over Mm -hmm. and over and over and over again. It scared me to my absolute, I couldn't look at a computer. Like it's really, it spooked me because like I, we, it like, 
I was like, we have a computer in our house. And I was like, don't take your eye off of it for a second or it'll start being haunted. Wow. Yeah, it really, it really freaked me out. I, to the to the point where like I really don't like uh I don't like leaving screens on if I don't have to. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really don't like it. What do you you know? Because it's been twenty years since then. Do you know why? For whatever reason. I don't like ghosts. I don't like ghosts. Okay. Ghosts really scare me. The ghosts like of all the um, of all the like kind of like scary movies, mm-hmm. ghosts. And like hauntings, hauntings and possessions really upset me. Huh? More than anything. Do you know why? Have you ever thought about? Uh, there's nothing there. It's uh, you're completely, you are completely powerless to it. And it's a, and it's a form and a function that like you can't fundamentally understand. Interesting. Like you know, like slasher next- movies don't scare me that much because I know like because there is there it is existing within physical space. Yes. In a realm in which. I can understand. Right. I can wrap my head around it. Someone just yeah attacking a bunch of teenagers with a machete. But with ghosts, nah, nah, I just don't. Or like spirits, oh uh, no. Is, is there a difference between Baba, a ghost and spirits? The Baba Dukes. Sure. No, don't like it. No. The difference between ghosts and spirits: a spirit may be an entity of of its own. A ghost is the is the reflection of like a human being. Oh, okay. A ghost is like a passed on human. Sure. At least in my head canon. Okay. Like a spirit might be like a spirit of air or like something. Oh, I see. You know. Okay. Yeah. That makes okay, that's a good delineation. I'm good at delineations. You're very good at delineations. But yeah, I don't like those I don't like those kinds of movies. They really I that I will like whew. What's your adult one? The ring. Oh yeah. Yeah. But it's the end of the ring. The fir- the whole movie is extremely scary because it's the way it's shot and it yeah. just keeps ra- ratcheting up the tension. A thousand percent. And it's just like, oh, you watch the video. The video itself is just like, this is all weird. This is kind of crazy. But like, you just they keep showing the shots, it's, um, you know, in the movies. Like, oh, she's standing. Oh, she's standing where that shot was from the video. Oh my god. Oh no. But it fought the ring follows normal ghost story protocol of there's a haunting i'm i'm a spirit i'm haunt or i'm a ghost i'm haunting you i'm killing people because uh-huh. someone needs to avenge my death i i can't yeah. let go because of uh, i have been wronged and the wrong needs to be righted well she does it mm-hmm. she does she solves the murder the people who killed the young girl are brought to justice yeah and then the movie keeps going it should stop yeah and that's fundamentally just no that's no 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 you don't keep going no the whole point of a ghost story is that i i thank you for freeing me i can finally pass on i'm really sorry about the things okay bye look by all that time haunting she just got a she just got a taste for murder i think she no i think she just like being on tv jay (laughs) she got a taste for the limelight okay did you do that whole thing just for that joke no i didn't okay but but i made it sound like i did (laughs) <laughs> there, there was a. I just saw on social media. Lesbian. There was a, a a movie theater that did like a ring. They like played like the intro, like the ring video as like a trailer on April Fool's Day, uh, like as a part of their, like the April Fool's joke was like during the trailers they played the ring video, and I, 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 <laughs> I like no joke, no joke. I I would leave I would leave the theater and I would I would ask for my money back. Yeah, I'd be like, hey, hey, I appreciate that you guys are trying to pull like it's April Fool's Day and you guys are trying to be funny. That was decidedly uncool. Yeah, I would like my money back and I will not be coming back. No, thank you. I understand what you're trying to do here. I don't think you know. I I, I this isn't nope nope that ain't nope nope nope. 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 No. No, that that, that, that the whole last scene of I I solved them, you know, I solved it. Samara is free, blah 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 blah. And then we're back with the guy, and then I was like, why is the movie still going? And then we just we for the first time like see the whole thing in action for coming out of the TV. And it's like this should not be happening right now. This goes against all protocol. Uh, how dare you? I don't like this at all. Yeah. You turned the thing I love the most into the vehicle for murder. Nope. Yeah. No, thank you. The most I will say in, no. in of in modern times of movies that like truly scared me to my core, 
uh, the most scared I've ever been in a movie theater um, uh, was when we went. Uh, I think did you and I see this together? Did we see Did we see Joker together? Did we? I don't remember. I, um, I because I saw it at, at uh, Lincoln Center, Sixty Sixth Street. It's probably us then, yeah. And it was, and it was, and it was, you know, and they haven't updated all of their theaters. Sure. You know, so mm-hmm. it's not like all the, uh, you know, it's the old school like. Mm-hmm. You're kind of packed in there like sardines a little bit. A little bit. And it was it was sold out. Mm-hmm. Packed to the brim. Yeah. And there was just some, I, and I think it speaks to the it, like how effective the movie is to some degree. Um I just I got meta scared. Oh. I was like I I felt unsafe in that theater and I couldn't put my finger on it. Why? It was there was a certain layer of like I think there are a lot of people here at this movie for the wrong reasons. Sure. And if anything we're going to ha- like, you know, the concept of the Joker in regards to movie theaters has a lot of baggage to it. And there was a like there was some time there mm-hmm. where I just was like if anything were going to happen in a theater like this would be the one and I just and the movie just had a menace to it. Yes, it did. That I just was like, I, I almost bailed. Like, I almost was like, I'm going to go. Like, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. The only thing that kept me in there was like, we were just packed in like sardines. I was like, we're in the middle of the road. I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't be that guy. I would. <laughs> and now that I'm saying that out loud, I'm like, oh, cool. I was fearing for my life, but I didn't want to be rude to anyone watching that movie. <laughs> <laughs> then, li- then live rude die yeah, poli- I'd rather die polite than live rude that's the most midwestern thing I never even unpacked that but yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah I was yeah I was really freaked out during that movie and I, I and it's an incredible performance but like I never need to see that movie again nope I mean, the sequel's coming out soon this year and I, I'm not sure I need I'm not sure I need it it's a musical I'm not sure. I, I I'm not sure what the point is. I'm not, say it made a lot of money. I like understand. It made so much money. I understand that, but I think, but I also think it had something important to say. Sure, it, it, it did. Um, but so I appreciated it, like artistically. But we'll see what happens in this. And we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, I, I also saw the Grudge oh, in the which theater. One's that one. That the Grudge is was the American remake of the uh, Grudge. Yes, yeah, so of the Grudge, the Japanese <laughs> version of it. Whereas a house is haunted because of uh, a murder, a murder suicide happens inside the house, and then like the spirits are just like, nope. Any anyone who comes in the house, we kill. Doesn't matter where you go, we will our we, our spirit will just find you, and then we will kill you. Oh. It had because it had the ring girl creepy. Uh, it was a Japanese family, so they kind of kept like it was a Japanese spirits. Uh huh. And like Japanese undead are just i don't know what it is it's just it, scary it, it was ju- it's just scary it's because they're a little bit more theatrical it was the is the hair the, the wife's the, you know the hair was in front they bring the a game and they had the little cu- the little kid was also haunting people and he had like basically like a very pale face with like you know with much like darker circles around his eyes oh it was the one that's the one where th- th- someone like goes in like crawls into their bed and then like, you see like the kid oh crawl yeah all under the covers and he's like this is just... I'm starting to get a little freaked out just talking about it. Yeah, I don't like Japanese horror because it doesn't follow conventional Western rules of, no, no, I've I completed the thing. You had a task for me. I've done my thing. You're free now. You can go. Oh, you were trapped in a house. I'm really sorry you died. We've solved your murder and destroyed the house. Yeah. You're free to go. Yeah. No, you can't just keep killing people. The entitlement of a happy ending is purely an American idea, Lashy. Not just I, I, no, it's not even happy ending. It's, it's, it's just you had a task for me, I finished it. Yeah, it curses lifted. You're free. Man, you're gonna hate the later stages of capitalism, my friend. <laughs> I just spooked the hell out of me. <laughs> oh man, <sighs> I don't like those things. Yeah, we gotta stop talking about scary movies because I'm starting to get a little scared. Oh, okay. I'm a little bit of a Freddy cat. You are sometimes. a little bit of a Freddy cat. I can be a little bit of a Freddy cat. I'm a big brave dog, but also a little Freddy cat. This little Freddy cat. Just depends on the thing, mm-hmm. you know? You know? Well, that's been Roll for Condro, everybody. We, we did, did it. it. We did it. 
everyone's favorite segment. We took a poll. Um, uh, but we should be moving on to um, we should be moving on to our pitch of Palooza. I well, think I think we can. Yeah, but I mean, in general, like video games have had a bad rap for a very long time. Yes, and have only like the past maybe four years or so have really had a shot of like, oh no, people are respecting these things now because mm-hmm. they don't work. They've never worked. No, they keep trying, and it never worked. Yeah, and it's and it's interesting because, and Hollywood was never going to stop trying, only because they were. Well, the one thing Hollywood could not ignore about video games mm-hmm. was that they were video games have slow have overtaken, but slowly over time have become the most profitable entertainment platform, mm-hmm. like on the planet. By like billions of dollars. Yeah, like the the Hollywood like doesn't even compare nope. to video games anymore. They don't, and so like they can't really ignore it. Nope. But also at the same time, it's really difficult to. They they just fundamentally, they don't respect the industry. No, they don't. And so they were all. never able to really nail it. And I think that's really the biggest issue. Mm-hmm. Um, but before we start to talk more about video games, we should probably find more about um, uh, the this whole trend. Possibly? This whole trend. Yes. The no. trend of uh, m- turning video games into movies and television show. And Brian rolls that beautiful bean fun fact footage. And probably pitches uh, his uh, Talking Horror podcast because uh, he yeah, tricked we, us we into talking, talking about, about horror, horror movies. movies. Yeah. Good job, Brian. You earned it. Thank you, gentlemen. Producer Brian here. And today, it is a pitch of palooza of video games. There are tons of video game movies. Some of them are good, like the Sonic movies and the TV show The Last of Us and even Werewolves Within. But then most of them are really bad, like Blood Rain and Mortal Kombat Annihilation, Doom, among so, so, so many others. But I don't really want to talk about that. You you know which uh, video game movies are good and which ones are bad. What I want to talk about is that I actually went to WrestleMania 40, uh, night two in Philadelphia, and I am not a wrestling fan, but it was awesome i do not follow any of the storylines a buddy of mine took me because he loves wrestling and he spent the day explaining all of the backstories and the context to me growing up i really didn't understand wrestling wwe um i knew who all of the people were like the rock stone cold steve austin john cena stuff like that but i just didn't follow it i just didn't understand like rooting for something that you know spoiler alert is scripted but i'll tell you I completely changed when seeing it live. It was really, really cool to sit with and see all of the passionate fans watch this incredibly, wonderfully put together event. It was really fun. The actors, the wrestlers are truly amazing. I just had an absolute blast. The energy in that stadium was out outrageous and spoiler alert if you haven't seen wrestlemania 40 um john cena was there the rock was there the undertaker was there all for cody rhodes uh, and and it was just like truly 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 awesome um and i've been to a lot of sporting events like i've seen messi in barcelona kick a penalty kick right in front of me and that was not as loud as when the undertaker's bell tolled in the stadium and everybody knew exactly what was going to happen that is the loudest i've ever heard a sporting event it was amazing it was like a top five sporting event i've ever been to live it was truly truly incredible but i just wanted to talk about that and as jay said listen to talking horror with jamie and nikisha that is a horror podcast where we break down horror movies through the lens of mental health and human behavior we talk about old horror movies we talk about new horror movies it's a podcast you can watch the video on youtube i will link the descriptions um, in the podcast episode but uh, you should definitely definitely check it out anyway back to you gentlemen and please enjoy your pitch of palooza Good job, Brian. Great job, Brian. I have no idea what you talked about. There was a lot. You said a lot of things. Yeah, we, you yeah. mentioned a lot of different movies. Good job, buddy. Good, good, good job. Good job. You've earned yourself one extra man's. Did, an extra mention? life? Yeah, an extra man. 
one up. You call him extra man? I was, no, I was just trying to, I didn't want to say, you know. Extra life? Yeah. Why not? That's the term. I mean, there's many terms. You could have said green mushroom. That would have been a one up. That is a one up. You get a one up. You one say up. one up. You get a one up. Yeah. There if you, you get seven of them, then you have a nice cold seven up. You like seven up? I like seven up yours, Jay. I don't know. I never understood that joke. I never understood it. No. Seven up yours. And I was like, uh, I was like, so are we, is the joke that it's just up yours? I think so. Is that it? Yeah. Because it felt, people thought it was so funny yeah. that I was like, people were like, can you believe that how funny this is? I was like, clearly there's a layer to this that I am missing. And it's not that it's not funny. Mm-hmm. It's just not as funny as the the cultural penetration would suggest. Sure. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. The amount of people talking about the 7-Up Yours situation felt to me that I was like, this has got to be funnier than I think than it is because I don't get it. Huh, they were making shirts. People bought so much merch. They did. Like, it was a... It was Wasn't some- Godfrey the spokesman for 7-Up at the time? I no, I want to say it was Doug Jones. I think it was Doug Jones. Of of Doug Jones fame? Not uh, uh who am I thinking? Fa- of? Famous character actor who's very no, good not that Doug Jones. Other Doug Jones. Oh, okay. Right? I don't know. I don't know. What right. are we even talking about? Uh, We've probably cut this out anyways. It's fine. Maybe or probably not. I'm back again, gentlemen, because his name is Orlando Jones of Evolution fame. Video game movies and TV shows. They're bad. They're really bad. They're very bad. Mostly they are bad. We can pretty much count on one hand the good ones. I I like I'm not having a hard like honestly and it's Last of Us. It's re Oh, Last of Us, yeah. And the recency bias is throwing Rampage my way. Ram- hey, it's that you know what? Rampage was not bad. Was not bad. It wasn't good though. No, but it was fun. It was and, that, fun. and that's 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 the bar for these things. Was it a good time? Was it fun? Yeah. The Halo hey. show is serviceable. Apparently season two was very serviceable. Okay. Halo f- season one was crap. I thought it was fine. Eh, now no, that I'm no, thinking Jay, about it. I was sitting next to you when we watched it. You did not like it. But ah. I heard season two was better. Okay. So possibly season two maybe crossed that bar. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, but past... Honestly, past The Last of Us, nothing is really nothing is really standing out as like truly like hey, that, that totally worked. Yeah, like nothing is real. Was the Resident Evil movies were all no nope. not? I mean, they they're they, bad. They I'm were, sorry, they they're bad. bad. No, no, I was gonna say they like they they turned them into their own thing. Sure, that's the only reason why they they kept making them was like, oh, these aren't even close to the game. Is this, this is just not even this close. Is some, you just took the name of it. Yeah, this isn't even close to the game. I mean, Street Fighter. Mortal Oof. Kombat 1 and 2. I would well, argue Mortal Kombat 1, 1 is was, okay. Oh, Mortal Kombat 1 was okay. I liked it. That's that's fun. I'm a, okay, but the I'm going to say one, this. the new one, I the we enjoyed the, we enjoyed the new one. The new one was fun. Yeah. I'm also going to with that new character everyone didn't like. We when enjoyed was the it. last time you went and watched the original Mortal Kombat? When we didn't we I think it was when we did the I think we did we fixed the, Annihilation. We, yeah, we, we fixed Annihilation. We didn't watch, watch I watched the first one for that. Oh, you did? Yeah, cuz it was cuz that one's fun. Annihilation's really bad. I think I think that one's still coasting on the nostalgia of seeing it as you know a teenager in the theaters. Possibly when it felt kind of naughty. Sure, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm just saying that once I think that one's still coasting on. Oh, our our generations. I've got another win. Sonic, the Sonic films. Yeah, Sonic and the Mario movie. I think was a win. And the Mario movie. Yep, the Mario movie figured it out. Like there are. And I would, I would, to me, Lego Batman feels like a video game movie. Okay, it's not, but okay, I can see why you would say that. Only because the majority of Lego Batman's rise to uh, prominence Mm -hmm. was from the Lego Batman games. Really? Yes. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Just saying. Um, but other than that, I mean, we, we there's been so many swings and misses. The Tomb Raider films back in the day with uh, <sighs> what's her name? They're what? not Tomb Raider though. No, that's the they're, thing. They're, they're, the first one was closer, but it wasn't really. I would also argue that the, I this may sound. The, I think the original Tomb Raider games don't necessarily hold up either. 
Like, I think we have a lot of affection for them. I think it's a nostalgia play. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, the newer games are fantastic. I haven't played the newer ones, but oh, I'm newer, saying well, the old... People are like, you know, like, oh, the old, like, Tomb Raider. And they're like, oh, the movie wasn't that good. And I was like, the game wasn't that good. It was a weird... Yeah, it was a kind of a platformer. They did a hand... It was a janky handling. Yeah. Um, we all know why we like the original Tomb Raider games. Come on now, guys. We all know why we liked them. Tell me why, Lashy. No, no. We, everyone already knows. Oh, okay. But what if I don't? You know, find out someday, bud. All right. This is why everyone has a crush on Tifa from the 90s. Oh. Tifa? Who's Tifa? You're from Final Fantasy VII? Oh. Oh. Why do you have to make it lewd? Anyways. I'm not making it lewd! No, you, you, t- t- we don't work blue! <laughs> 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 um, uh, yeah, I think it all... It, it all hems from the fact... Yeah. I just like feel bad for all of these like create like these studios that like kind of come out swinging mm-hmm. with trying to make one of these work because the the hand is stacked against them. Yes, and I just never really understood. I never really understood why, uh, like how some of these screenwriters get hired to do these things. When <laughs> I understand that there's there is a specific way you need to write a script in order to like make a movie mm-hmm. and it is different from how a plot unfolds in a video game mm-hmm. but to me the biggest like pitfall of any of these video game to movie translations comes down to they didn't realize what was fun about this game and therefore they don't have the ability to like they don't have the ability to encapsulate this into a movie in a way that I would enjoy. It's like kind of an esoteric, like well, here's the- ephemeral. Uh, ephemeral is the word I'm looking for. I've been using esoteric a lot, and I've been using it wrong. I've been it's an ephemeral thing. It's like yeah. kind of like it's this doesn't capture this world. You're right because you experience the world of a video game differently than you experience a movie. Yes, and that's the fundamental problem with things, and that's how video games became their own movies. As we were talking about it like 10 minutes ago, of like movies have a hard time of capturing what's going yes. on in video games because they just don't understand it. But video games and the people behind them understand what makes really good movies, and they've slowly become that's the thing. They've become the 35 hour movie now. Yes. Yes. Because it's those mo- the, the games are that good. We, we watch shows for a living. My favorite show is. Or at least in my top three shows that I have watched this year. In the scant three months we've had. God of War Ragnarok is on that list. I got really, really into the story. Like uh, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Those games. I really, really care about these characters. Yes. And I really like this story. Mm -hmm. And it's... And it's... Yeah, I guess I never realized that it's kind of a... It's kind of a one-way street. It is. Movies or games have figured out how to be movies. Movies have not figured out how to adapt games. But I would uh, like, I would argue that The Last of Us is the f- is revolutionary. The television show, yes. I mean, is revolutionary in that it figured out a way. It figured out a way to like if video game gamers are getting better at making movies in their games. Mm-hmm. I think they finally figured out how to, like, that's what bridged the gap. Yes. Because The Last of Us television show was the first thing I was like, oh, they actually took a video game storyline and figured out a way to map it to a six-episode structure that actually pops. And they changed some stuff. Because you have to. And they and they were like, oh, they're changing stuff about the story. I was like, yeah, that was a side quest that didn't matter. Like, it didn't need to, like, yeah, we mm-hmm. took the one piece that mattered and put it in here. Like, it's, I don't know. Uh, yeah, people... that's, that's, the, that's the thing. Movies are a different medium than games. Games we experience as we are playing the main character. We are making the decisions. We are doing the stuff. Yeah. So we can take our time and, like, play these things. But when our hands are off the controller and we are just watching the movie, mm-hmm. as of you know, when we're watching a movie, like you have to change the story because it's no longer a person in charge of the main character. You are now watching passively the main character go about their business. That fundamentally changes how you tell the story. Yeah. And The Last of Us did a very good job of like this is the video game story, 
told as a eight episode series. It's got you have was it to eight. I think was it eight to ten. I don't remember. But like it, I don't. It was more I than think six. It was, uh, really? It was more than six. Oh, okay. Because I think we had to hit Kansas City at like five. And there was more. After, there was <sighs> more after that. That's true. Uh, it's just like it. Storytelling is very hard. Yes. People, it's what it's it's one of those magic tricks like comedy. It's very hard, but people who are good at it make it seem like it's so simple. Same thing with storytelling, which is all uh, storytelling encompasses everything we do. Mm-hmm. It's very hard, which is why it doesn't translate. You just can't tell the same story the same way in two different mediums. You have to change it from books to screen. It has to change because it's a completely different medium. You're not yeah. in someone's head as you're reading pages of how Harry feels about you know using magic and what's going on with Molly. No, no. If we ever get to see that, there's going to be have to be see yeah. dialogue and see the actions on their face as they react to each other. Yeah. It fundamentally changes how the story is told. Mm-hmm. And mo- and video games are so immersive and are so good at grab- grabbing the player and like putting them in the in the shoes of the main character. That when you take that away from them and you put it on the screen, be it like, you know, it a couple feet away change. or like a big screen, it just, the relationship to that story changes and not a lot of people, or it seems like it's harder to grab the same people because it is fundamentally different. You're experiencing the story you already enjoy. That's why you came to this movie or watching yeah. the show. But or it is a world different. you want to spend more time in. Yes, and it's fundamentally different because you're not actively moving someone around and collecting the stuff. And I think that's why it's a thing. It's also, I mean, you know, to the filmmakers credit who don't always nail it, it's, it's a tough audience of people to please. Yes. Because when you are given such agency in these worlds, you have a tendency to care more about them. Mm -hmm. And so like having a fundamental understanding of why, of why your players would come to a movie version of this can't like for example i think uh i think a very good the sonic and the mario movies i feel like Mm -hmm. do a very good job of understanding what's fun about the world Mm -hmm. their their games Mm -hmm. like sonic is like you know it's kind of it's it's a little radical and it's kind of like you know it's it's quippy and it's kind of irreverent and like that's kind of what's fun about the sonic games because you feel like you're being bad mario you know, okay. that was always that's how I always felt about. I never Sonic. played any of this. Oh, they're fun. They're hard though. Um, little little rat go fast. Sure, um, yeah. uh, or little hog go fast. Little I, hog go fast. Yeah. <laughs> I am speed. Um, but in the Mario one, it's like cool, great. Like I want to see fun places, and like I want to I want to basically like come out of my normal world to like see some fantastical stuff. Like they under they get it, mm-hmm. but this is. A relatively new development. Yes, it is. Sonic's. I don't. I still don't fundamentally understand how Sonic worked. Like and it's, it, and it and it effing worked. Yeah, it worked so. And it's like Sonic, a made up character that's now in the real world. Like that shouldn't work. That shouldn't work. Yeah. And it and it so works. It's so it's gonna it's so worked to work twice. And Knuckles is getting a spin off, which is coming out in a couple weeks. Which is wild. Which me. is wild. And the the third movie's going like. It's insane. Well, I think yeah, Sonic is interesting <laughs> because I think it's it, it is a combination of of um you have Jim Carrey committing so hard to mm-hmm. Dr. Robotnik in such a silly way that like makes it feel like weirdly more grandiose. like it feels like a cartoon but also more grounded at the same time. It's yeah. really odd. Mm-hmm. It's a weird combination, mm-hmm. but it, it it works. Um and it also um it 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 loves its source material, but doesn't take it too seriously. Yes. And that's why Sonic mm-hmm. works. Um, but man, like you just go, like to think how far we've come, like we, we've covered the super Mario brothers movie for this, mm-hmm. uh, for this podcast. Mm-hmm. Anytime I like mention that, like the movies just like fundamentally doesn't understand what's fun about the game. Mm-hmm. That's immediately what comes to mind. Yeah. I was just like, Oh, they just like, didn't they, it's like, they never played it. They never played it. Like they don't even, they don't even. There's no joy here. Nope. Like they're they're, you know, I guess putting all the stuff that they're supposed to put in there, but well, that was back in the day, and then I think nowadays, well, at the '90s, it wasn't cool being a nerd. No, society has changed. Like if you want to actually get a franchise, like 
if you want a franchise, you want to make a lot of money, you take properties that people already know and you adapt, adapt them to a new medium. And do them well. And do them well. Back They didn't care about that in the 90s. Yeah, they do you don't. remember the Double Dragon movie, which I never saw, but do you remember they made the Double Dragon movie? I, I'd never seen it. I, It's like, trash. It has, uh, and it has nothing to do with Double Dragons. Yeah. Because that was that was the t- the tent pole of like '90s and early 2000s like franchise movies. It's like, well, why would we have any of the stuff from the actual franchise? Let's let's make it seem more relatable and real in this world. We why just need, we just need the name? Just do the thing. Yeah, we just need the name. Give yeah. us a name. We'll pop on a thing. We'll make everyone think this is what it is, and it's not at all. Yeah. And then the nerd you know, Marvel started the nerd revolution. Thanks, Marvel. Thanks, Marvel. Or you know what? You know what? Thanks, Sony, for doing Spider Man. Yes, and the first X Men. Yes, that was Fox. They 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 had really two really good comic book movies. Like, oh wait a second, maybe if we actually started caring about this and did a good job, people we would actually make more money if we respected the audience. Well, I will say this: <sighs> I think in in that regard, I think Spider Man, I think Spider Man, like those two, first two movies, alerted Hollywood to. There's a like nerddom is a gold mine, mm-hmm. and if and uh, the Dark Knight and Iron Man informed informed them that oh if we actually do a good job we'll make even more money mm-hmm. oh okay because yeah they uh, Spider Man three and X two and three or half of X two yeah. into three I got you yeah we yeah. they learned like we learned like oh they don't care they just want to print money oops yeah. We're getting lost in the sauce a little we bit. We are here. just a little bit, but the, the, the main thing is that these video games now are helping themselves, or the franchises are helping themselves by making movies out of their out of the, out of the content, which makes it easier to jump into a different forum, yeah, into a different medium. Which is why, like the Forbidden or the Horizon series, that's ha, has it been picked up or figured, like is you know it's always, still in talks. It's always I still like it talks like it could it could happen. Um, like The Last of Us got picked up, and hopefully you know. Do you need writers? We would love to work on that project. Well, the, the Last that. of Us success is like, oh yeah, this is basically this, you know, very similar to Aloy and her journey in, in Future Earth. So like, uh-huh. do stuff like that. The God of War games, the newer ones, being basically just amazing movies of a father and a son. Like, there's a lot of stuff here. Yeah, but they're still easy. cranking out like Border. I have to be honest, I don't think the Borderlands. Borderlands games, I don't think right. Borderlands looks very good. I I. I I, I think we, that movie's going to flop. It, and I think I, it might too. Well, I think I don't want it to. No. Let's be clear. I'm not trying to be negative for negative sake. I I but I'm I'm really worried about that. So it's like we're not out of the woods yet. We are not. Well, I mean, we we we're, we're living a weird time right now cuz Fallout's coming out in a couple of days and that looked like it nailed the tone. It looks good. But again, you can never when this in this kind of partnership, you can never be too sure. You can never be too but all signs are indicating that this looks pretty good. And because I think one of the main things that people are learning is that you, the main person behind the stories of these uh, games need to be, not if not in charge, then very much closely tied to in the writer's room, you know, guiding the, the, yes. the story. Because that's what they did with The Last of Us. And it worked for the first season. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, for those of us, for those of you who have no idea what's going to happen in the second season... I think the second season is going to have a much different impact on people because yeah, it's a because it's told in a uh, TV show and not a video game. I think it's going to be very. It's going to be people are going to hate it. I, it's depending on how they tell it. I think people are going to get really, really upset. I think they are going to get upset, but I think it's going to be a lot different than what happened when the game came yeah, out. Man. They're just they got a tea time for America's sweetheart in a way that I think people are going to be really. Uh, I'm trying to talk as codedly as possible. I think everyone knows what you're anything. talking about, but it's it's going to be interesting. But I think it's going to be like the this story told in the video game format didn't work for a vast many people. Yeah. But this story, same story, told in a TV show format, could work. Could work. Yeah. Because you don't have you are removed from things and not actually in charge of stuff. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Fallout looks Fallout looks like it could be good. And there could be like God of War has been talked about, like of being a series. Yeah, we'll see about that. There's, I but, think there's other, yeah, but other shows of or other other I think properties God of War are might like be perfect just in the medium that it is. Oh, it already is. There's also that that I don't think necessarily Hollywood has taken into consideration is that like sometimes the medium has nailed it. Yeah. Perfect example: Gears of War. They are perfect the way they are. Yeah. Like there is. The gameplay of that game is so 
is so t- like tied into the storyline mm-hmm. that I don't I I have experienced the peak of that story, I think. I don't ever need a Gears of War show. Uh, show. I don't need it. With Batista being Dom? No. I really don't. Dom? Is that actually happening? I think that's what they were talking about. I don't or that that has been kind of like around. Or Fe- is he Phoenix? Phoenix, Marcus? Marcus Phoenix. Yes, Dom is his friend. Oh, yes. Who's the girlfriend of is yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Dom is yeah. Like there is I mean that's a good story, but the thing is it's got the Halo issue, right? Because it's yeah. a, it's a shooter game. You want it like, every yeah. every episode needs to be shooting stuff. Yeah. And Halo That's what I'm saying. didn't do I, that. I don't think, I, which is yeah. why the first season didn't work very well. No, and they all, he also took off his helmet too much. Sure, they just mm, small fix. They just uh, I mean, actually, you know what? I have it in my Palooza. We'll okay. talk about it in a yeah. little bit. But uh, yeah, I think we should probably move yeah. into our. So, uh, so we, J, Jay and I came up with just a bunch of like, oh crap, no log lines. I lost, I lost the screen. Log lines and ideas for. It's not going to be there when I pop it back up, is it? No, no. This log lines and ideas. This is edited out, so don't worry about it. Log lines and ideas for uh, a bunch of different video game uh, movies and shows and stuff like that. Kind of rapid fire. We don't have to go. We don't have to make the whole thing right now. We can just kind of like, hey, here's a general idea. Give us, give us money. We'll make it. Yeah. Or we'll yeah. help write it. Okay. Yeah. So I, I now, uh, Jay's got a few. I've got. I've a got handful. like fifteen. Wow. Okay, that's a lot more than I do. <laughs> uh, but I went back and I went back. Okay. I went back. All right. To my childhood. So. Okay. Uh, do you want to start first, or do you want me to? No, start? I'd like you to go first. Okay. And then I will pepper mine in. Sure. Uh, so my first pitch for a video game series is Cubert. Okay. Cubert. Followed mouth Cubert is actually like a guy really down on his luck. He's crass. He's bad with money, but he loves his kids and is still in love with his ex-wife. But he's really just good at this stupid hopscotch game these gangs keep playing. And it's the only way he can make money. So we follow Q as he tries to get his life back together and support the family he loves. He just doesn't know how to show it. So it's a kid who saves his family with the power of hopscotch. Well, I, you know, you know the game Cubert, right? No, I understand, but like I he's a know. small little alien man. Yeah, and so he just cusses a lot because he's he's just he's crass. It's kind of kind of so. So you're gonna make him a real person? Yeah, well, not in a real person. No, but like we just follow Q. But like he, but he'll talk. But he just but cusses it's, a it, lot. But it's the little guy. Yeah, with the weird little nose. Yeah. But it's not. A, oh, oh! I in my head, I had it. It was just like a. This is like a gritty drama with it like is a, a gritty, normal human. A normal no, person. not a not a, not a normal person. But it's a gritty drama. Oh, okay. This is a man trying to get his life back together. Like that's the story. <laughs> it's just a man trying to get his life together. <laughs> Why do we fall down, Master Cupid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. just you know, and there's like the gangs because like the snakes or whatever. Who would you have voice in Cubert? Ooh, good question. Yeah. I think because you can uh, look. This one's a swing. You're gonna need a star attached. This one, I think. Will Arnett. Will Arnett. Okay, I can dig it. Yeah, because it's yeah, because it's gonna be a lot of like. Uh, oh, it's gonna be foul. Yeah, because there's a reason why every time he dies, he or you know gets hit, he, he cusses. Like it's going to be profane. Yeah, but like, and that I think that that colors the whole world. He's you know he's living in. Yeah, it's rough. He's trying his best, and he's you know it's not it's hard for him. Totally. I think that's that's a story. It's an underdog story that everyone can get behind. It just happens to be this little squat orange guy with a big old honker. Okay. <laughs> he just loves his kids, man. I just really liked how he, the way he said "big old honker." <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Cubert. All right. Come and catch it. Um, my okay. My first pitch. Yep. Um, with the success, I mean, obviously, sci-fi is never going anywhere. Nope. Um, and uh, the success of uh, Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna kind of smush those two and add a little bit of a little bit of Battlestar Galactica in there, and I would like an eight part. Uh, I would like an eight part HBO series, a gritty sci-fi space drama, Star Fox. Oh crap! 
Oh, yeah. Okay. And I want them to be anthropomorphized. I want them to be the full-on creatures, okay. but, like, the CG in such a way that, like, it's... The, the uncanny valley on that is nuts, and I'm aware they'd that pulled, that would be tricky. They pulled it off. It's Sonic. But I want I want them going after Andros in a way that, like, I want them to lose some good soldiers. You know what I'm R- saying? Ribbit. Like, r- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Slippy gets Slippy is not a good pilot, and Slippy gets some people killed in a way that gets some court martialed, like that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> like, wow. I, oh yeah, I want a gritty Star Fox man. Sure. Like, I like I want it to be like Wing Commander. Okay. I, and I know I'm speaking your language, talking Wing Commander. You are. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's the show. That's the show that I would like. Um, and as far as like uh. Man, can you imagine like, like uh, uh, Pepper, like on his deathbed? Like, oh my, oh my God! He's, oh. <laughs> like he's just like grabbing Fox by like the little palm, like do barrel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Wow. Okay. Yeah, dude. Oof. Ian McShane playing Star Wolf. Come on, come on. I don't even know I, all these characters. Acting like, like Ian McShane ain't playing Star Wolf. You play Smash Bros. Come on, Star Wolf. He's no. he's like Star Fox, but he's a wolf. Oh, it's okay. pretty compelling. <laughs> it's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> He's like a Star Fox, but like a wolf. Sure. Star Wolf? Star Wolf, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. He was introduced in uh, Star Fox 64. You don't remember? Oh, I never played that one. All right. What's your next one? Um, f- Funny enough, uh, my next one is Wing Commander. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Wing Commander needs another shot. Because remember, yeah, they made you know, the movie with Freddie Prinze Jr. You're absolutely correct. It absolutely does. And, um... And, it's, um okay... That being said, though, I look, Wing Commander is a well-respected within certain circles, but I have to be honest with you. Wing Commander, at least, I remember its box art. I remember its marketing when it came out as a PC game. Mm-hmm. I remember everything about, about uh, <laughs> and this is just hitting me. Do you know what Wing Commander kind of felt like? It kind of felt like at some point it was gonna try to co- like try to get you to come to church. Really? It felt. It feels. Wing Commander is like the Christian rock of music genres of video games. It just felt. It felt kind of off in a way that, like, you know, when like you listen to a song and then you're like. Wait a minute. Uh, wait, the thing, wait is, a is, minute. Is the thing you're talking about Jesus? Oh, I just thought it was a cool wait, ass rock song about being minute. awesome. Yeah. And rising above and, you know, wait becoming a, a super saiyan. Oh, you're talking about being embracing Jesus? Oh, I've been Yeah, here but great. I also, but you you also forget that I spent a lot of time with that media growing up and you didn't. So you don't necessarily really know what I'm yeah, talking about. Bounce right off. Me. That's fine. But Wing, Wing Commander was always a little bit, a little, it always felt a little homeschooled. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. Did you play any of the games? No. Okay. No, I'm going strictly from the marketing. I don't remember the marketing. It just felt a little like too like so nerdy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Okay. But anyways, they made a movie in the 2000s and in the aughts did not work. Matthew Lillard. That's what I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it didn't work. Um, they tried really hard. It didn't work. But I think this this franchise deserves another shot because. It's it's basically just do the Kilrathi War. You just follow Blair and Joker, which is was the, yeah. the main two main, main characters, as their hotshot pilots, and they defend Earth from the Kilrathi. And it's basically a crossover of Battlestar Galactica sure. and Space Above and Beyond. Yeah. It does it have Star Wolf in it? No, it does not. Well shit. But it's a lot it's you know, it's basically like it's the rogue squadron show that we we fucking want. I'm, I yeah. Just r- give us Rogue Squadron, the I show. Can't, I can't believe they gave us that whole trailer with her getting in that X-wing, and then they just kind of like, yeah, we're new, we're not doing it. I was like, you know what? You real eat. Mm. But I mean, Anyways. there's there is room for another show like Battlestar Galactica. Absolutely. Because like we can easily do that. Just you know, it's just you know the line, line product producer is like, listen, just make a couple of cockpits, and we could do you know a lot of stuff in CG in these dogfights. Is I think it would be very compelling for a couple of seasons. Real easy. Yeah. Um, okay. 
I'm just going through. I'm going through all my ideas and okay. just trying to pick the ones that are actually legitimately before we completely descend into madness over. Oh, side okay. Of the well, fence. yes. You're, yeah, you're in your. Side um, of the I think it's stupid. Oh, okay. I think it's stupid that we never that Space Jam never really had any kind of. There was never an answer to it. The only thing they've ever done is spe- another. They just made another. Sp- they just remade it. So we never got more. The concept of Space Jam of sports stars making the movies where they're diegetically that sports star, we didn't get any more of that, and I think that's stupid. And I, so I, I, I think I, Jay Schmidt, Shaq came out with a game called Shaq Fu. He did, and it was a fighting game. It was where all these, you know, all these buck wild characters yes. with these absolutely insane slash inane yes. power sets. Right, but Shaq was just Shaq. He was, and he and he fought and them. Yeah. The fact that we never got a Shaq Fu movie is ridiculous. It's so stupid we never got that. And I would say, I, I would I argue it could work. that we, it, could, it could, work work. could work now. It could work now. I want a he's, Shaq Fu He's the master movie. teaching the Shaq Fu to the next generation. Or it's just like, oh, yeah, or it's like all of Shaq's, you know, all of his uh, all of his ghosts coming back to haunt him. <laughs> or you know? that, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Shaq. Or, or, <laughs> or it's like these kids, like it's kind of like Jumanji, these kids getting sucked into Shaq and they don't realize that like Shaq, they don't realize that the war in Shaq Fu was real and Shaq has been defending us from, from oh, we need him on from that the wall? interdimensional gates. Sure. Not only is he, not only did he swoop into, but you know, buy a part of uh, Papa John's so we can all feel, you know, what? not feel like racist ordering that pizza anymore. He did. Oh yeah, Papa. Yeah, Shaq I, owns a lot of uh, like a, a large stake of no, Papa. Had Jones. no idea. Shaq is an incredible businessman. Oh okay. He took their whole PR disaster and was like, "Oh, I'll just buy. Like, you'll sell to me at the, like at pennies on the dollar, and then I'll just be your spokesperson." And they were like, "Oh, okay, great." Made it like a bandit. Wow. The guy's killing it. Yeah, Good but job. also he's Good been job. defending us <laughs> <laughs> from inter, international inter, intergalactic kung fu monsters. I want Shaq Fu. That's okay. all I'm saying. Uh, you know what? That's not crazy. Yeah, I think it could work. I that, think it better I, I be better than that. steel. Oh boy, and yeah. Uh, what's your next one? Monkey Island. Oh, do you remember those games? Yes, I think there was Sierra. Were they Sierra games? Yeah, uh, yes, early Lucas, mm-hmm. early Lucas oh, Arts. Yeah, okay. Yep, early Lucas. Um, yep. Lucas Arts. Yep. Um, so I, a fun, quirky, but a more grounded pirate adventure. Yes. So I was thinking like one piece in tone, but Pirates of the Caribbean in flavor. Oh, okay. Yeah, because those games are kind of funny. They are funny because they fight by uh, jabbing at each other with jokes. Yeah. And one line zingers. That's how they fight. Um, and just, you know, we can take, I mean, we can just basically just kind of take if you, some of the storylines I guess if you wanted from the games but well, they are very narrative heavy games so it would be they pretty are. it might translate pretty well or we can just you know that's your, that's your flavoring of you know the tone of the show we can just have pirate adventures and have fun but you know, that's the oh they're fighting but it's all like personal jabs it's or yeah. it's or it's a sword fighting rap battle oh that's not bad yeah that's because they, not that they would be rapping but it's the same like oh I'm gonna dig at you well I can dig you back yeah. So a lot of it is just you got to we got to learn about these characters, and then eventually you know they they will fight over. You know, I certain see things. your Monkey Island, and if that works, you could move into you could do a similar similar a same studio, a similar game format, but scary Alone in the Dark. I was also thinking about Alone in the Dark. You know they also made the movie. Yeah, they, they tried that. I think it's. I don't think it's come out yet. I think they're still working on it. Oh, they well one came out a while ago. Oh, did it? Really? Yes, and they also just. Oh no, they're working on a new game. I'm sorry. It's out. Oh, it came out. Yeah, the one with uh, Hopper, David Harbour. He's the one that's voicing the main character. Apparently. Oh yeah, that's out. That's out. I saw a oh. review on it. Any good? Meh. Oh, it wasn't terrible, but it was also not that best. <sighs> it's. I feel like that game. They can. They're going to keep trying to remake that. I think it was kind of lightning in a bottle. It was like the first kind of survival horror game. Well, I would argue that they did make that they did a very successful sequel to Alone in the Dark, and it's called Resident Evil. Yeah, they, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's kind of thing where it's like that we that we've transcended this mm-hmm. in its own way. It's just a shame it's not the same brand. Anyways, um, it's Monkey Island that could that could work. That'd I be, think that's fun. A, that the that success is, of the success of One Piece paves the way for Monkey Island. That absolutely could get made. That absolutely. 
Um, yeah, because see, see, cause, I mean, people talk during sword fights all the time, but it would take a, it would take a very interesting scene and a very deft director to be able to yeah. and a for, and a fight choreographer to be like we're actually fighting with our you know our f- verbal jabs and cuts and cut downs yeah oh i see what's happening that's awesome um uh, my next movie yep uh super mario sunshine oh the sunshine games you yeah. know where they're on the island yes the and the mario's kind of working there with the backpack Shh. yeah um, and so it would be a little bit kind of a slower paced movie. Sure. Um, and then, cause like Mario is kind of working to save the Island. Uh, but then what ends up happening is, is that Mario, uh, kind of starts to fall for the, uh, the mayor's daughter, Uh-oh. Stacy Carosi. And so it kind of drives oh, a wedge this, between is him this where, and, is this where, just real quick, is this where things start Peach. descending off, <laughs> off the, off the, uh, off the rails? Yeah, it's day? like, yeah, it's like, it's like, uh, yeah, so it's like, it's Super Mario Sunshine, like the, the, the summer season. Um, oh, I remember Stacey yeah. Carosi. Oh, oh, we all, oh, married, oh, we all, we all remember Stacey Carosi. <sighs> Anyways. Anyways. Yeah. My, my turn again? Uh. Oh, oh this, is that what well, was? Was that it? Been, yeah, that was. It. Okay, yeah, that was it. it's been dictating everything I've said. Oh this. no, you had dictation on? Oh, oh no! Crap, I didn't mean to do that. Stop! Oh my god! Okay, well, while you're deleting that, here's my next one. F Zero. Oh yeah, man! It's just a gritty race movie, like Days of Thunder. What is F Zero? That's uh, flashy, bright, futury, but grounded. So it's shot like Days of Thunder, not Speed Racer or Elite the Battle Angel. Because yeah. remember, there was some like race stuff yes. or like that battle that sequence roll, was pretty roll, cool roller too. ball or whatever yeah. type of thing that was an alita uh but it was, it was still a little bit closer to speed racer than it was like days of thunder so it was a little like ah wait what's happening my eyes ah! yeah um but dude it, it's it's just a it's days of Th- just make days of thunder yeah f-zero that's it i mean it's, it's just copy it just change some names change the parts in the car just yeah. have um what's uh, um wasn't the main guy in F Zero? Have him be the main character. Uh, uh, Falcon, Captain Falcon. Yeah, have Captain Falcon be the uh, Falcon Pond. Yeah, and have him earn the title of Captain Falcon by the end. Yeah, he's some. He's his last name's just Falcon. He can just go by Falcon the whole movie, and then like his he he yeah. finally like raises through the ranks and is able to win the thing, and he like he just like wins. He also wins his nickname as yeah. of Captain Falcon by the end of the movie. Who are we casting as Captain Falcon? Well, why do you want somebody like kind of like I'm because like this is kind of you know gritty so like oh oh what about the stoner dude from Party Down the the good looking blonde haired guy who's an actor oh yeah I think his name's Ryan Ryan Harrison. Ryan something? I can help with that. His name is Ryan Hansen. No, that's not that's not bad. I could I can get down on that. Yeah. Fucking Pahaj. And you make it a little funny. Oh yes. I think you make it a little fun. A little fun. Oh, it's, of course it's gonna be fun. But it's yeah. all, but you know, it's, it's the F Zero racing is, is freaking serious. Yeah. They're hovering and they got the hover fact that we've stuff. never gotten another one of those games. It's the, just the a racing ex- movie, the guys. The extent to which Nintendo just layer it over. It's not hard. Nintendo has so many incredible IPs, and they do the absolute bare minimum with them in a way that I I find wildly. Well, it's the Super Mario movie's fault. Mm-hmm. Okay, which th- may also be fixed by the Super Mario Brothers movie. This is not necess- This this may be one of my actually like actual per- like ideas oh okay um it's not exactly like a <coughs> narrative show but the fact that they have never like i think that they could have a reality dance competition show for the just dance games the just i don't know what's they're they're dancing games for like is this ddr for, is it like no, is these it are not, not DDRs. DDR. these are the ones that have the cameras and you got to like do the movements along with them oh and the thing is, is that like okay. they have actual people on the screen doing this stuff, and I think that if you had a dance comp, like a competition for this game, and like the the winners would get would be put into the game. 
Oh, sweet. Because we're seeing a lot of like there are content creators in the just dance space who have been like done well enough that like they they were like, Hey, we're just gonna like put you in one of these dances. Oh and, like, wow. It's awesome. That's awesome. Because like the content creators like make content about going to like record for just dance. So it, like it works yeah. for everybody. Yeah. But like I think a I think a reality, like a dance competition, like so you think you can dance, but for, like this branded. So you think you can just dance? Just, so you think you can just dance? Yes. I think that's great. I and mean, I think it's fun. And it would sell more copies yeah. of the game. Money, please. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. Like it's perfect. It, like the yeah. synergy is. Because yeah. then you have dancers and you also have people, uh, like uh, game designers, also kind of judging because they know how to do. Yeah. Um, do I have. Thing. I, I actually came up with a couple more reality. I, I will I'll speed yeah. run these a little bit because sure. um, uh, I have uh, uh, as far as reality shows go. Sure. Um, <laughs> I have a I have a cooking competition show. Okay. That is uh, it, that will be inspired by uh, it'll be inspired by the classic video game Gauntlet. A cooking show inspired by Gauntlet. The title of the show is Green Wizard Needs Food Badly. And it's a competition show. It's a competition show where you have adventurers who are fighting off uh, all these bad guys. Hordes and, and, and hordes of bad yeah, guys. Yeah, and the, you got to cook good enough to make sure they don't die. <laughs> <laughs> because they're, they're constantly losing health. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah. They can be perfectly fine, yeah. but they're just losing health. That's, okay. Yeah, that, yeah. That's Green quarter, Wizard needs food badly. Eater, eater that's right stupid. There. Yep. Not really a reality television show, but uh, this old house, uh, Minecraft edition. <laughs> oh, sure. And with with your host, uh, Block Vila. That's really dumb. <laughs> that's dumb. That's dumb. <laughs> My dad might like that one. Um, in a re- from a reality perspective, yes. I actually this is more. Uh, I would this is inspired by a game, but I think it would be a documentary about said game, so okay. a little bit meta. Um, but I think it would just be a gritty multi part uh, documentary about um, a group of strangers that this documentary hires to actually figure out the storyline to Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and all the different ways people have tried to understand what's actually going on in this game, fair, and really follow it to some kind of conclusion. Some people burn out, some people get there, sure, but yeah. they all go their their they all go their own individual ways. Um, yeah, I think that would actually be really okay. I have some more, but it's your it's your turn now. My turn. Uh, okay, this is more of this. I think it's more of a movie. Smash TV. Kind of like an we do an updated, yes. updated Running Man, yeah, man, with today's tech and social media angles on it. Oh yeah, so it like, I would argue they did make Smash TV. Did they? Um, I think Guns Akimbo was basically Smash. I was TV. thinking Guns Akimbo. That was kind of the, the. It's it is a little similar, yeah. And it, that's but that's the that I feel like had the vibe that a Smash TV would succeed mm-hmm. with. Think about yeah, so I, I, that's I was kind of thinking that Guns Akimbo, but more in a studio. And yeah, yeah, more a in the studio. More... Yeah, a little bit more Running Man. Yes, with it, with the pomp, the circumstances. God, I love that movie. It's bad. Guns Akimbo. No Running, Running Man. Man. Yeah, it's bad. But I, I think what they... I love it. Did they try to remake that? Did they remake that? They may have. And they did it like they did like um like a Total Recall. I was like, no, this one's closer to the book. I was like, yeah, unfortunately, the we movie is care. better than the we book. We don't care. Oh, um, I want to see that third movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so it's basically, yeah, Smash TV, uh, where, you know, it kind of just shows a little bit in the future where TV and entertainment have gone, and it's up to two guys to get through the obstacles and, and showcase what's really going on. Okay. So it's also, like, a little bit like, it's a little bit like, um, Portal. How, you know, how you kind of go, in, like, Portal 1 and 2, where you're kind of going through, and all of a sudden there are some stages where the walls are broken. Yeah. And they can kind of get behind things. And like, hey, you think this enter- is all entertainment and stuff like this, but like, actually, like people are dying and like yeah. try to expose and like use the use it kind of. So it's also a little bit like Gladiator, using the entertainment spectacle to get across to you know, oh, aren't you entertained? Well, listen to me, people are actually dying. This is really going on. Like you know, this whole in social media and all this stuff is like it's a good. It might be a good vehicle to kind of talk about a lot of the things going on when it comes to media nowadays. Yeah. Um, Smash TV. That's really good. Catch it. Catch it. Um uh uh Helldivers 2. Ba 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 ba. Um I thought uh there could be a fun office sitcom about the people who are just working on the ship. 
Oh, okay. You know, sure. I thought that'd be a fun, like a fun little, like a multicam kind of okay. sitcom of sure. them, them working on the ship. Welcome and, back, Hell Divers. And well, yeah, but the whole joke is that like the Hell Diver that you could have the cameos of just all the Hell Divers because they're just uh, there's so many of them are dying all the time. They're so replaceable that like you could have like yeah, it could the amount of like celebrity cameos you could have as Hell Divers would be because a lot of people like this game. You'd be like, hey, you get your free for an afternoon for a quick, you know, like you yeah, know, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think that could be really fun. Um, then I realized this when I was writing that I didn't come up with show ideas. I came up with fun video game ideas. Oh, okay. Um, but just, I, I'm, yeah, but I didn't really realize that until I was organizing my thoughts. Um, Assassin's Creed Genesis, um, where mm-hmm. you're, it's set in the Garden of Eden and you play as Cain and as soon as you assassinate Abel, the game is over. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a 15 minute game. It's kind, of, it's kind of fun. Yeah. There's no double blade or anything. It's just a so rock. Just get yeah, a rock. I'm realizing that's just a game. That's not a. Um, that's not a. Um, oh, I think. Okay. Okay. Here's a. Oh, here's a good movie. Oh, okay. Here's a good movie. Um, <laughs> it's like. It's like the Gran Turismo movie that just came out. Oh, right. Where, you know, where they like sure. take the kid who's really good yeah. at Gran Turismo and they make him a real race yeah, fighter? which really happened. But, but they do that, but with Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> and they take the best Street Fighter ki- uh, player in the world and turn him into a cage fighter. <laughs> Yikes. All right, nerd. You're going to learn how to fight. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I think that'd be a fun movie. D- uh, uh. <laughs> Um, oh, we could make a movie out of uh, Beat Saber. Okay. Uh, and it'd be a gritty war drama when the blocks rebel and fight back against humanity after years of being uh, just slapped. Cut down to the beat. Yeah. And this and this pitch is mostly just for the tagline, the rhythm is going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Okay. I'm running out of ideas here. Uh, oh, this is another one of my ideas. Halo. Uh, the, a Halo show. It's exactly like Halo. He just doesn't take his helmet off all the stupid time. Um, sure. Oh, this is actually a good pitch. Um, the movie and the game. Goldeneye. It's you take a kid who is playing the game Goldeneye. Right. In a Jumanji style. Okay. They get sucked into the game. Okay. And so it is like... And but the game court becomes the movie. Okay. So we take the old footage, old footage of Goldeneye, mm-hmm. and then we can kind of like CG in, and we could probably get Pierce Brosnan and to some degree involved. Okay. But we basically like it's all the classic scenes from Goldeneye. Right. But if is as if James Bond in those scenes was being played by a thirteen-year-old boy. Wow. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. I, like that's kind of fun, right? Sure. Like one of those Ready Player One levels. It's kind of yes. It's like one of those Ready Player One levels, but like it'd be funny. Yeah. You know. But also, like he'd be kind of like walking up, a little like, jank. Yeah. Yeah, be a little janky, but it'd be the movie Goldeneye. Sure. What's your what's that face? It's, that's just that's interesting where your brain goes. Yeah. I'm I'm more thinking of a meta aspect of like oh this was the assignment and I were actually like oh yeah Jay is still on assignment but that's interesting how he interpreted wow Jay's brain man yeah <laughs> not even once <laughs> <laughs> shut up <laughs> at least for me um okay I've I mean, got two I more can, by I, the way yeah, okay hit me with another one uh double dragons I think double oh. dragons deserves another shot I agree and double dragons is going to be more like a Batman esque tale of vengeance as two brothers to get pushed over the edge and use their martial arts to uh, take Adam's back their city from the gangs vengeance, everybody. corrupt officials so it's basically so it's a little Batman esque but it's more like but think of a show that's actually been done before it's Daredevil yeah it's Daredevil yeah but we said it in like you know like was it like future Detroit or whatever whatever the city is or whatever yeah. it's gritty it's dark yeah. But like it's everything's corrupt and bad. The gangs are in charge of everything. Like the, the, the but yeah, the man. city officials are like just going along with it, and it's just like you know what? We're really good at martial arts. Yeah, dude. We're done. And I don't want to fridge the girlfriend because the girlfriend gets like kidnapped in the game. In the game. Yeah. So I don't want to do that. But like, just 
to have them just be pushed over the edge. Family trauma in the back, you know, in the in, from the, the beginning, you know, from when they were kids or whatever. They learned a bunch of stuff, and now they're just like done. And we're what what left? What left? Do we have to lose. Let's just beat the crap out of everyone yeah, in this dude. city. Find the you know find our commissioner Gordon and see if we can't Fight sa- like hell. save the city. Yeah, dude. And then your post credit sequence and leading into season two, Battle Toads. The Battle Toads, no, no, because I don't like that game because it's unwinnable. No, but, but Double Dragon and Battle Toads have a combined game together. I know. Remember? I remember. You know, why are you not? I thought I thought you would just be like high fiving me and like. Dude, battle! I got Battle Toads when it came out. No, I'm. I understand. And it's unbeatable. But you, it's not about the game. It's about the fiction. Of, it's fun that the Battle Toads get to come. It was supposed to be, haha, that would be cool. Let's move on. Not, I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. <sighs> yes, and me, damn it. No, Battle Toads. Um. Okay. Okay. Battle Toads, fix your game, man. Do I have? Okay, we did block Vila. Not really that good of a joke. Um. Just Dance, Stacy Carosi, got that one. Mm-hmm. Got that last, one. Last call. Oh, this is my last one. Or just, and I think this might be my best my best one. Okay. Downton, Downton Revolution. It is the show Downton Abbey. We just add a rhythm mechanic to it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can dance along to all your favorite episodes of Downton Abbey. You know? Oh, no, the butler is so sad and crying. But hope you hit the right. Hope you hit left, left, right, up, down. <laughs> yeah man can you imagine just watching down to Abbey and then you just see like the, the little arrows going <laughs> i've never watched down in Abbey. i don't know yeah it's it's aggressively not a show you would want to no oh. okay i can laugh at my own jokes That's yes totally fine. i'm i'm not saying it's not funny yeah. i just i just don't know the yeah. uh the reference you're pulling from uh, but the rhythm is going to get you. Got that one. You got that one. It was very funny. Oh, I think it blew my load. Okay, good to know. There we go. I have one more pitch. Hit me. And I, I, I can't believe this has not been made into a show yet. Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, why isn't that a thing yet? Since three. That's fascinating to me that that doesn't exist. It's just been mob stories going around the town, you know, doing all these cool things in in service of, you know, I I've never I've never played these games because it's it's not the type of game that I like, but like it's it is narrative enough where there are story and we saw the trailer for the 6th one and that looked insane. Yeah. How is there not a show based in a Grand Theft Auto city? You it doesn't, it doesn't have, have to be characters. Vice. It doesn't have to be Miami. It doesn't you know? It, has, it doesn't have to be. But just like pick, like Fallout seems like it's gonna do. Of like, hey, it's just another. It's just another adventure in the it Fallout universe. A, it can be a pastiche to stuff that people like from this. Yep. Yeah. That's fascinating. How is there not a? How is there how not a is Grand Theft Auto show? How is there not a movie or a show? That's because those show those especially those with the sixth one like those cities are like chock full of craziness. Do you want to know what I honestly think about it? I honestly think those games are so profitable and so popular that they feel like we can only lose ground by making a movie. Do you know what I'm saying? Possibly, yeah, sure. Like, we're fine. We're good at telling our own story. We don't necessarily need a movie in order to promote this film. Well. Promote this game. Are they? What do you mean? Because wasn't there, like, almost a 15-year gap between GTA 5 and 6? I mean, yeah. Fifteen years? It wasn't Some, fifteen years. Or as I'm thinking, like Skyrim, I'm thinking like Elder Scrolls. Everyone's yeah. like, "Hey, where's Elder we, Scrolls we've Six? Had, we've had five. Stop remaking Skyrim. We've had five for a while. But like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But those I don't think that it's been fifteen years, but it's been a while. You're it just wrong. it just seems like that 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 story element of these you know crime families doing a thing, yeah, a young so, per- just you know. Oh shit! Here we go again. Like I just feel like these the, these memes have penetrated to pop culture. That how is how have they not capitalized on setting a story in a GTA inspired city? Seems like it might. It seems like on paper that might work. Yeah, I think because that's... people like crime stories. Yeah, yeah. Or you know, someone trying to get out from under. You know, f- you know, find a. A slice of normalcy, getting out from it, doing, trying to get away from this craziness, but they got to go through a bunch of crazy hoops in order to find their way out. 
willing to find out. Well, you can't. Season two. Like, there's, huh, you could, you know, yeah. a couple of seasons. You, know, you, don't, you don't have to overstay your welcome, but just, like, you know, misadventures in a, in a, in a GTA-style city. Yeah. I mean, it's no Shaq Fu, but I'll take it. It is no Shaq Fu. But then again, Jay, what is? Yeah, that's true. I still think we can get that movie greenlit. Shaq Fu? I, th- I honestly think if we, I think if, if we got that in front of Shaq, he'd say yeah. Well, j- seeing the success of Cobra Kai, and now yeah. also them making a sequel movie. I'm sorry. To karate, to the Karate Kid, to the Cobra Kai show. What? Yeah. What? They're making a Cobra Kai movie. Yes, but I don't. Is I think it's more a Karate Kid okay. sequel. Okay. Well, who's it's, the Karate Kid? I don't know. Because it's not Danny. Because he's not kidding. It's, it's not Danny, but Danny's in it. Huh. Ralph Macchio's in it as as Danny. It, uh, but I believe it's a sequel. I think it's a sequel to Cobra Kai. All right. Maybe Brian could back me up on that. I know they're already wor- they're working on it. I can back you up, Adam. The movie that they're making is called Karate Kid, and it stars Jackie Chan and Ralph Macchio as their two characters. It's supposed to come out in December. I believe the 13th of this year, 2024, but uh, we'll see. It'll be the sixth installment in the Karate Kid franchise. Or they announced it or something like that. They are working. uh, Yeah, something something is afoot in the uh, the, the Cobra Kai Karate Kid universe. All right. Yeah. Jay. We did a very good job, Jay. Yeah. We re- we really did this. Other than you just like not laughing at my downtown downtown uh, revolution joke, uh, you know. You just need you just needed to show that it started with the D. No, it's just if you Downton Abbey is a is a, a period drama about oh, I, high I, society and butlers and it'd be hilarious. If it'd it was a, a rhythm- DDR game? Yes. So you worked backwards? You saw Downton Abbey and I was like, wait a second, that starts with a D. DDR. All right, everybody. Well, we oh. did it. We fixed it. Can you, know, you like, believe you it? Like, said, Can you believe it? DDR, look What's, at this. What show starts with a D? Uh, this is what oh. I prioritize my time to do. All right, everybody. <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, hit that bell. Do that YouTube that you do so well. And if you're catching this wherever you catch your audio podcasts, uh, leave us a little review. Leave us a little five stars. You know, just it makes me happy. Just do it. I'm not your mom, but like, come on. Yeah, come just, on. Just let us know which pitch was which show you like to watch. Yeah, uh, wh- which episode of Dancing Abbey would you like to dance to? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, you think you can just dance so to Downton think- Abbey <laughs> with your host Block Vila? <laughs> that was not a good joke. Uh, hope he doesn't fall over, Stacy Grossi. All right, and as we end. Every single one of these episodes, heartbreak feels good in a place like this. It's the slow, please press start to continue. Did you never see coming? We'll see you guys next week. This has been Rug Talk. (laughs) Bye. Bye.